that warning, if I were you. Tom Purdy, who shot him? I don't know. The shot seemed to come from the Bonanza. So that's their answer. Murphy, take care of it. What's happened? Another killing. Who was it? Tom Purdy. Gee, I want you to take a message. Write it in the form of a notice and send a copy to every name listed here. The time has come for us to band together and fight for the peace and security of our own. Under present conditions, we have no alternative but to take the law into our own hands. I therefore call upon each of you to appear tomorrow night at 8 o'clock at Twin Oaks. Come on. I'm David Ross, head of the Vigilante Committee. Did you get that? I got it. Now listen, Dave, you can't get away with this. Why, I thought you'd given up this vigilante idea. You know, you can't make your own laws. Vigilantes are going to enforce them. I'll sign those when they're finished. Dave's going through with his crazy vigilante idea. If chasing killers and murderers out of the community is a crazy idea, then I'm willing to be crazy. As your attorney, let me point out that you are taking the law into your own hands. You're making yourself legally responsible for an illegal act. I wouldn't sign those if I were you. I'll risk it. I'm not discounting the danger, men. I know that we've got a tough fight on our hands. But wouldn't it be worthwhile to see Trails End cleaned up? A decent place to live in. You wouldn't get a very good view of it from the cemetery. He's right. It would be suicide for us to try to buck that mob. There ain't enough of us to do the job. We'd be outnumbered three to one. I know that we're outnumbered. But I'm expecting help. Who do you mean? Must have I'm scared. Hi, boy. Hello, boys. Hello, Dave. Hiya. Dave, I hope we ain't late. <laughs> You're just in time. The committee thinks we haven't a chance against that bunch in town. <laughs> They're plenty tough. Tough? They're no tougher than a lot we've tackled. Well, what's your plan? Plan? We don't need any plan. Ride into town and start shooting and keep on shooting until the last man's run out. What do you say, boys? That's the way. That's the way. That's the way. Wait a minute, boys. Might be able to lick him with that plan, but happy you won't be here to celebrate the victory. I think the right way to do it is to plan a surprise attack. Here's how we go about it. Oh. 
Vigilantes are coming. How do you know? I've seen them over the ridge. They're right behind me. Vigilantes are coming. Barricade the doors and get your car. Barricaded. Get rid of your torches. All right, men. You know what to do. Tip them off. I wish I knew. Keep them busy. Don't turn around. Drop your gun. All of you. We gave you a chance to leave peaceably, but you wouldn't take it. Just a minute. I'm a stranger here. I dropped in for a moment and I got caught in the middle of this mess. That's true. I haven't seen you before. If you have nothing against me, I'd like to stay in town. All right. You may remain. Get them out. When that bunch crosses the county line, our work will be over. The vigilantes will disband. We can all go back to our homes knowing that we've done a good job. Boys, you know how grateful I am. Saying thank you seems a little small. Oh, forget <laughs> it. Well, Dave, you're due for a big shock tomorrow. Why? We're coming over to pay back the money you loaned us. All right. Then I'll see you in the morning. And thanks again. Okay. You needn't thank me. I done all right. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't do so bad myself. It seems a pity to bust up a sweet little racket like this. I think you've got something there. Get your hands in the air. Hello. Aren't you a little old to be playing with dolls? Uh, well, uh, see, he's not mine. Lullaby is Elmer's daddy. Here's your receipt. Staying in town long? No. Nope. We'll be heading back for the ranch as soon as we get some supplies. Thanks again, Dave. 
Call on me anytime if I can help you. We'll call on you even if you can't help us. <laughs> you, uh, you've been working here long? I'll bet Dave's a great guy to work for, isn't he? Mm -hmm. But old Poker Puss McAllister, he must be a pain in the neck. Well, if that old crab ever laughed, he'd crack his face. Jean, come here. Yes, Father. Father. <laughs> Mac's daughter. He didn't like it. Well, why didn't somebody tell me? Why didn't you ask? Thought you said Stoney was a lady's man. Turn that thing off. All right, Father, old sourpuss. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> Hi, boys. Hello. Hi, fellas. Hi, Stoney. But I thought Ross had disbanded his vigilante. He did. This is a new outfit. We're just borrowing his idea and making it pay dividends. Who's ahead in this new outfit? I can't tell you his name, but he's one of the biggest men in this county. And plenty smart. I could use a little extra dough. Count us in. With our cut in the profits, we can retire in a year's time. Sounds all right. When are you getting started? We're holding our first meeting tonight. I'll be there. Give him the robe. From now on, you'll be known as number 17. You've all been through the same ceremony, so we will now close the meeting by taking our oath of allegiance, which will be given to us by our leader, number one. Do you solemnly swear to unquestioningly obey all orders issued by me, your leader? I do. Remember, once you have been initiated into the purple vigilantes, there is no turning back. Only death can release you. To all of this you solemnly swear? I do. My vigilante idea is proving a boomerang. We try to stamp out crime and only succeed in showing criminals a new way to break the law. Yeah, a smart way to cover up their tracks by shifting the blame to the original vigilantes that you organized. This was found outside of Bascom's place. This is one of the notices I sent out six weeks ago. That's what I figured. It looks as though some of your original outfit was mixed up with this bunch. Any idea who they are? Not the slightest. I could have sworn that every man I picked was trustworthy. Yeah, maybe so. Dave, a lot of people are feeling pretty bitter against you. Some of them believe that you're still heading the vigilantes. Might be a good idea if you left town for a little while. I'm not in the habit of running away from trouble, Jim. But what's the sense of waiting for it to catch up with you? You're imagining things. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! What's the meaning of all this? A little present for your partner, Dave Ross, and the rest of his purple killers. And tell him the next time it won't be windows we'll break. I'll have the law on you for this. Imagination, eh? 
If I ran away, I'd be admitting my guilt. But, Dave, what's the sense of sticking your chin out? Why don't you take a little trip? No. I'm going to stay and get at the bottom of this. Thanks for the advice, Jim. Hello. Remember me? Why, of course I do. You're the little boy who plays with dolls. Lady, you never said a truer word. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on? Stoney. Come on over here, boys. You too, Lullaby. I'll see you later. You too. If Dave stays here, somebody with a grudge is going to get him. Well, what can we do? Well, I thought you might talk to him. The only way to get him out of town would be to kidnap him. Yeah, or arrest him. There's an idea. He'd be safe in jail, wouldn't he? Not in this jail. Well, couldn't you take him to the county seat? Sure, if there was a charge against him. Well, that ought to be easy. Uh, Dave Ross is head of the Purple Vigilantes. Fine. Let's make it good while we're at it. Sheriff, I saw Dave Ross kill three defenseless men and rob their widows. How's that? <laughs> Hold on, Sheriff. You sure there won't be any kickback? Not a chance. I don't intend to file this complaint. All I want to do is get Dave out of town. Sign it. Tracy. Tracy. I'm taking Ross over to the county seat. Right. You'll be in charge here until I get back. Yes, sir. Hello, Jim. Boys. Miss Kateers, I've issued a complaint against you, Ross. I'll have to take you over to the county seat. <laughs> so you're in on the plot to get me out of town, too. <laughs> Be sensible, Dave. Your life isn't worth a plugged nickel around these parts. Just go along with the sheriff and give us a chance to clear things up. <laughs> he hasn't any choice in the matter. I've got enough on Dave to hang him. <laughs> a fine thing when your best friends frame you. I'll tell Mac. Oh, Mac. I'm your prisoner. to see who fired the shot? I didn't have to see. It was Ross. And hanging ain't good enough for him. See your gun. Hasn't been fired. And one of his hired killers did it. Yeah, one of his sneaking vigilantes shot him. That complaint isn't on the level, Tracy. Just a minute. Well, that's just an excuse to get Ross out of town. It looks to me like it establishes a motive. Wait a minute. You gotta give us a chance to explain. You can do your explaining in court. Ross, you're under arrest. You realize, of course, the most damaging evidence against Dave is your complaint. But we didn't explain all that. I expect you to, on the witness stand. I'm going to call each of you to testify regarding your interview with Sheriff Dyer. You know, Drake, I have an idea that somebody's in back of all this that wants Ross out of the way, and badly. If we only knew the reason why, we'd have plenty to work on. I hope you boys realize that we're depending on your testimony to clear Dave at the trial tomorrow. Now, don't fail us. 
We'll be there. Oh, good. I'll see you in the morning, then. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, I've got a date. I'll see you fellas later. Nothing doing. If you're coming with us. We've got to start for court early in the morning. I want some breakfast. What a man. He's always hungry. We'll eat when we get to town before court opens. Look! Let's get him. No, we haven't time. We've got to be in court by 10. This may be the only means of saving Dave. We can make it. we got to be in court. Mr. McAllister, that you were present when David Roth called a meeting of the vigilantes? Why, uh, answer yes or no. Well, yes. Is this David Roth's signature? Yes, it, it is. Thank you, Mr. McAllister. That's all. Like a truce. I reckon I've had enough. Yeah, maybe, and then again, maybe it's a trick. We'd better not take any chances. Oh, oh, oh. I reckon they fought her light, boys. Are you bad hurt, lullaby? Oh. Oh. Take it easy, boys. It may be a trap. Hey, look. A uh, horse. Gentlemen of the jury, have you agreed upon a verdict? In this case, one of the most reprehensible that I've ever tried. The crimes that you inspired did not cease with your capture. To the contrary, they have increased. Your unfortunately loyal followers have continued their raids, believing that they would terrorize this court into releasing you. To prove to them that their reprisals and warnings are unavailing. I sentence you to be hanged. Hey, Jim, is the trial over? Yeah, and it's all over for Ross, too. He was found guilty. Don't give up hope, Dave. Dave! We heard about it outside. If you'd been on hand to testify, the verdict might have been different. We were lucky to get here at all. We were ambushed. Well, now that we are here, isn't there something we can do? I'm afraid not. It's too late. I know. You did your best, boys. Can't we appeal the case? That's what I intend to do. Without your help. Day that somebody's really framing Ross. Those notes are all phony. We know that. We only had more time. Yeah. Three more days until the execution. We haven't uncovered a thing. 
I'm going over to see Drake. Say, why didn't you beat it when you had a chance? Thought I'd wait and have a little talk with you. You're one of the musketeers, aren't you? If you wanted to have a little talk, what's the idea of playing tag? I'd better introduce myself. My name is Jones. I represent the Cooperative Insurance Company. <laughs> Don't tell me this is a new way to sell insurance. Investigation is my line. I wanted to have a little talk with one of you boys, private-like, because I think we're all working to the same objective. I don't get it. Ross and McAllister are partners. My company holds an insurance policy that pays $100,000 to the surviving partner. And from the looks of things, Ross isn't going to survive very long. You don't mean that Mac... Oh, no, he couldn't be. A man will do a lot for 100000 And from what I saw of the books when you so rudely interrupted, I know the firm is in serious financial straits. Here. This will hold you until you get back to town. Thanks. I haven't any definite proof that McAllister is the man, but I expect to have the information I need real soon. Well, it better be real soon if we expect to save Ross. I'll get word to you as quick as I can. We'd better not be seen together. Right. Got him? Yes, he's in his office. Thanks. Yes, that's all right. Say, listen, did you ever hear of knocking? I'd like to talk to you, McAllister. Alone. We'll go over this later. Yes, all right. Well? Is it true that you benefit by Dave's death to the tune of $100,000? Why, uh, I, uh... What are you talking about? Oh, just a little matter of an insurance policy, payable to the surviving partner. Hey, listen here, you insignificant young puppy. Are you trying to insinuate... I'm not that? insinuating anything. I'm trying to get at the facts. Fact? Why, you and your bungling pals wouldn't know a fact if it jumped up in your lap. Now, wait a minute. We happen to know that Ross was framed. Oh, I see. And you accuse me of framing him, eh? We're not accusing anyone. Yet. 
Hey, now you listen to me, young man. A lot of people figure that you three framed Dave. First with your affidavit, then failing to show up when your testimony might have saved you. Now, I advise you not to go around trying to implicate innocent people. That is, if you know what's good for you. Now, get out. You're not just stupid and headstrong. You're contemptible. What you need is a swift kick in the pants and a muzzle. We'll walk into his office and deliberately tip your mitt. Well, I just wanted to give him a chance to clear things up. I can't believe it, Max Gildy. All right, so I made a mistake. Forget it. Now, listen, I've got an idea that will work. Yeah, I like the last one. If we could just get our hands on one of those vigilantes and make him talk. What do you think we've been doing the last three weeks, knitting? Oh, listen, muscle-bound, this idea is surefire. Now, come on, I'll tell you all about it. What he meant by say, look what's coming. Oh, I'm... Hold it, folks. We'll handle him in the regular way. First, we'll make him answer some questions. Okay. Who do you think he's got? I can't make it out. We'd better get the boys together. Whoever it is, we can't let him talk. Sheriff Tracy will come on County tomorrow night. <laughs> He'll be well taken care of till the sheriff gets back. All right, man, let's break it up. Come on, let's go. You big ox, what do you want to hit me so hard for? You almost broke my jaw. <laughs> it was your idea. For once, you're on your own. What do you want me to do now? Look, after it gets dark, you beat it, huh? I know where to find you. We can't wait any longer for the others. shooting men if we can help them. We don't want the town aroused. The idea is to slip in and take our man out as quickly as possible. All right, boys. Number three. Heading for the jail. Why? Our calling cards. Draw your guns, boys, Ollie. Hey, 
engaged. Don't follow me. Meet me at the hotel room. Crazy Galoot knows what he's doing. You and me both. I thought he was one of our boys. You got my order to come back here, and you disregarded it. Yeah, but but I thought that... You didn't think. That's just the trouble. But, Chief, I only wanted to fix him for trying to trick the vigilantes. I repeat, you did not follow instructions. You have broken your pledge. Dismiss the others. Number one, quick. What's up? There's somebody in there who don't belong. the roll. When his number is called, each man will step forward and unmask. Number four, come forward. Number five. Number six. Number six. Who are you? William Jones. It won't do you any good to kill me. I've got enough dope on this gang to... Search him. Report on vigilante activity. Say, he sure did get the dope. That was Stony Brook. I saw his face. We'll take care of him. 
It's important that we get that book. Get back there. Destroy all evidence. We can't meet here again. Have we better start looking for him? Sure. Sure. Where are we looking? I know we oughtn't let him go away alone. Will you quit acting like an old mother hen? Well, it ain't the prodigal son and all in one piece. Well, what did you fellas find out? Only that Mac wasn't at home or at the office. Come on, come on, tell us what happened. Well, that insurance fellow was there. They shot him. And this book was found on him. Report on vigilante activity. Boy, oh boy. What's the matter? Does it say anything? Nothing we don't already know. Don't name anybody. I thought I had something. Did any of that gang see this book? Well, just the first page. Well, for all they know, you have got something. That's right. Wonder if this would work. You mustn't take it so hard, Mac. Well, we've, we've been partners for a long time. I know. There's nothing more we can do. Your nerves are pretty well shot, aren't you? But you ought to do it to get away from here for a while. Well, I, I'd like to, but who would look after the business? Well, I've been handling your affairs for some time. Surely, I should be able to keep things going for a little while. I believe I'll take you up on that. Are you leaving right away, Dad? Yes, yes, dear. Uh, leaving this afternoon. We got some good news, Mac. Stoney got hold of some evidence. It's going to clear Dave. Evidence? What sort of evidence? Just a little black book, but it's dynamite. It's going to blow up the real leader of this crooked outfit. Uh, let me see the book. Stoney's got it. He didn't want to risk having someone take it away from him, so he's hiding out at Twin Oak. We're going to meet him there and take it to the county seat. You better come along with us, uh, Mac. Yes, but uh, why? What do you want me for? You might have to testify. Yes. <clears throat> well, I, I could meet you there later. I'd rather you came along with us. We don't want to take a chance on any delays. Yes, well, all right. Can you be ready to leave in 15 minutes? Yes. Yes, I can. We'll run over and see the sheriff. We'll pick you up here. All right. McAllister sure hedged a plenty about coming along. Say, what do we want to see Tracy about? Nothing. But we had to give Mac time to attend to any unfinished business.
Don't shoot. It's me, Fred. How'd you get here? Well, I heard the shooting. Thought maybe you needed help. Thanks. Keep busy while I reload. Stop that gun. So you're one of them too, huh? Number one, eh? Hand over that book. Tell me, is Mac mixed up with your mob? Of course not. Well, that insurance policy had nothing to do with it. It had a lot to do with it. I intend to collect on that policy. How? Mac's the beneficiary. He gave me power of attorney. If anything happened to him, I'd be in full control. I see. And, of course, something will happen to him. I'll get rid of Mac. Same way I got rid of the rest of them. Got in my way. You're getting real confidential, aren't you? Why not? You won't have a chance to talk. Before you go, would you like to leave a last word for Gene? Drop your guns and don't move. I'll bet you two to one when I take off that bed sheet, I'll uncover a skunk. That's not a bet. That's a fact. All right, boys, take him to town. I'm going back to the county seat. We've still got plenty of time to clear off. Well, I was never really worried about the outcome. I had Drake tagged all the time. I just played with him like a cat with a mouse. My, you must be brilliant. Well, if I must say so, I did handle this campaign rather well. Were your partners any help at all? Well, yes, but uh, strictly a one-man job. Stoney will dig in, you owe me. What? Well, you remember. That can that you bet against my five that McAllister was behind the whole works. You're crazy. I never made a bet like that. Why, Stoney? Hey, Stoney. There's a phone call from that red-headed gal in Montville. She wants to know what time you're calling for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 